something that everybody skips, including me, is an appropriate warm-up. Now, you don't need to do anything fancy at all, but just spending five minutes pre-workout, getting your heart rate up, makes a huge difference in your overall performance and recovery between sets when you're training in the gym. You can, of course, just do whatever exercise it is you're going to be doing, say squats or leg kills or whatever for today being leg day, and just do a few lighter sets and build it up. But what I often find to be the case is doing a few sets with a lighter weight, yes, I get warm and my kind of more awake over time, but my heart rate really won't be pushing until I get to the last set, maybe. And by that point in time, it's already too late. All of the cardiovascular responses that we want in terms of the heart rate increasing, blood vessels dilating, and improving delivery of nutrients to and removal of waste from the muscles, we want that happening before we get to our work sets because that's what's gonna help us get as much as we can out of that work set. You don't need to do any special exercise. I'm doing this because it gets my heart rate up very quickly. I like things like Stairmaster as well for that. You can do whatever you want though. There's no need to be doing any specific mobility exercise or stretching or anything like that. You can if you want, but whatever you do, just get that heart rate up at a progressive resistance over the course of about five-ish minutes until you start to get yourself out of breath. And then you can go to a more specific warm-up where you do a few lighter sets on the first exercise and slowly build that weight up. We are in Montreal in Canada and it is leg day. So I'm here at the Atlantis Gym, which is an incredible facility that has dozens upon dozens of unique pieces of equipment, a lot of prototypes, and just a whole bunch of stuff I've never seen before, which is really exciting and a little bit overwhelming when it comes to training legs because they've got over a dozen different squat leg press machines here. But to try to keep myself kind of limited, I'm just gonna give myself one exercise today, maybe two, um, and to sort of keep myself from doing a little bit too much. So one challenge a lot of people have is knowing whether or not they're making progress when it comes to their training. And of course, it's very easy to be tracking things like the weight on the machine or weight on the bar or whatever it may be. But there are so many other variables playing into this that could influence whether you lift a heavier weight or a lighter weight. Especially something like traveling here, trying different pieces of equipment. There's no way, unless I'm using the exact same machine every single time, to have a uniform scale of progression in terms of the actual weight. So what I prefer to do is, yes, weight is important, but understand that weight itself is just a tool for us to be able to track progression. And the real thing that we care about here with training is reaching a stimulus that is close-ish to fatigue in order to build muscle. This is a little bit different than building, say, strength, where you gotta be a little bit more meticulous with certain percentages. But when it comes to muscle building, as long as you hit roughly one to four-ish reps close to failure, you're going to have achieved a productive set. And then you can quantify that as one work set and then try to make sure you hit a minimum of, say, 10 work sets for a body part across a week, maybe as high as 30, depending on um, what body part it is and how you want to be progressing that thing. So as much as I care about seeing progression in weights, being on the road like this, there are so many extra challenges here where I'm not really sure how much I'm lifting. So as long as I push whatever it is I'm doing closest to failure and I get a dozen productive sets in across a workout or across a week for the body part, I'm pretty sweet. So we started off today with lying leg curl, which is a pretty bland exercise overall, but I like to start off my leg workouts with hamstrings just so I give them a bit more attention because they need more attention for me personally. We did a few warm sets, just bridging the weight up, and then we did two top sets of about four to eight-ish reps plus a drop set where we dropped the weight down by about 20% and did as many reps as possible just as a way for us to quantify, yes, we hit failure, and to make sure they're really pushed to that failure point. I'm more inclined to use failure points on isolation-based exercises like that, as opposed to something like a leg press, which is what's coming up next. So what I really like about this leg press here is how the weight moves on this pendulum. It kind of swings back and forth. And what this does is it creates a slight deload effect when you get to the bottom here which lets you access that kind of range of motion. Couple that with the angle of the foot plate and of the back plate here, it really lets me open up into my glutes, my adductors here, and get that really deep stretch, which is a bit harder to get on other machines, or especially harder to get on a traditional barbell squat without putting a lot more force through the lower back. Oh. 
Oh. Oh. Oh. The other thing about this machine is because of the way that that weight pivots and it's not moving on a linear track, the weight gets significantly more challenging as you reach oh. that lockout position, which is something most people, including myself, oh. aren't used to if you, don't, you don't have, if you don't have machines with this kind of arcing motion, oh. where I'm more used to, say, a barbell squat or traditional linear free weight exercises, even like oh. a leg press or a hack squat, where the weight remains relatively constant throughout the range of motion, oh. which means that as you reach the lockout position, it tends to get a lot easier. This is kind of flipped on its reverse, where oh. it deloads at the bottom, where it's normally hard, and then as you push up, it gets exponentially harder. So you reach that sticking point towards the end of the ref, not at the very start or the bottom of the squat. Very, very different feeling. All right, so we are doing two press exercises, not just one. When it comes to choosing the next exercise, I want to be a little bit more methodical now. So I want to do the pendulum because I like the pendulum, but in terms of how it challenges you, it's very similar to the leg press that we just did, where it gets more challenging as you reach that lockout position and it deloads slightly at the bottom due to the pendulum nature and the way that that weight moves on this arcing motion, not in a straight line. So it makes more sense to do something like a free weight barbell squat or a split squat, or what we're doing here is a machine hack squat, where the weight is traveling on a linear axis, which means it's gonna remain relatively constant throughout the entire range of motion but it still is gonna be much harder at the bottom due to the mechanics of a squat motion. So the hack squat, barbell squat, split squats, deadlifts, trap bailers, whatever you wanna use, it's more free weight exercises that travel in a linear line. They're gonna be hardest in that bottom stretched out position. Whereas the leg press I just did and the pendulum squat, they get a little bit easier. It helps to deal with that bottom position, which changes where things are hardest. Do you really need to worry about that in terms of getting stronger or building muscle mass? Maybe, maybe not. It really depends on your level of experience and where you're currently at with your training. I would say though, it makes a lot more economical and efficient sense to say, if you failed in one range of motion already, like I did in the leg press, it doesn't make as much sense to try to hit another failure point in that exact same range of motion by doing, say, the pendulum squat. Even though they are slightly different motions altogether, the challenge is very similar in my legs. It makes more sense to find a new position where I haven't really tapped into just yet and challenge that and push that to failure, which is why we're doing the, um, the hack squat. As I've already said, could have done this as a barbell or a freeweight squat or a deadlift. I just wanted to use this because we have it available and why not? So we're doing two sets here of about six to eight reps. Again, pushing close to failure, but not going completely to failure because you don't really need to. And we want to make sure we're able to come back probably most days this week to keep training here. So I don't want to be really digging a deep ditch of recovery, especially considering how this is only our first couple of workouts back since the last couple of weeks of a lot of, um, a lot of traveling. There are so many different ways to think about picking exercises for workouts or for programs across a week or a full training cycle. But one of the simplest things that I like to do is try to make sure you're hitting the muscle in all of its different muscle lengths, whether it's within a workout or within a week or across a full training cycle. So what I mean by this is for say hamstrings, for example, the lying leg curl trains the hamstrings when they're very, very short, when they're in their fully contracted, squeezed in position. Whereas something like a Romanian deadlift does the opposite, where it really stretches everything out at the hamstring, but it doesn't really get them into that same compressed short position where you get that really big crampy sensation. Neither exercise is better than the other. They just train different positions. And a very simple way to look at this is as long as you hit those different positions throughout your workout or throughout the whole training cycle, you can probably be pretty safely guaranteed to have a pretty even stimulus for growth and for strength and for mobility overall um, across your workouts. Big mistake I see people are making is they'll do four or five different exercises for quads or glutes or hamstrings or arms or whatever it is, but they all tend to have the same sticking point or the same failure points. And yes, you're doing 10 exercises or 20, 30 sets for the workout for the body parts, but you may be having these big gaps in your training. And this can be a very simple way to help to overcome that. So, so far today, we have done the hamstrings just in one position, we haven't done anything to stretch them out, and we're not going to today either. We'll save something like a Romanian deadlift more for a different workout, maybe tomorrow or the day after. Um, for quads and for glutes, we've trained them 
close to that lockout position and in that stretch position on the two um, squat exercises. And we're going to finish up here just on the leg extension, taking those quads only through their fully short and contracted position. You could also make the case to put in maybe a thrust of some sort to train the glutes and the hip extensors in that short position as well, but we'll probably do that on a separate workout day. But overall, if you look at this workout, it's actually very simple, very, very small, very low volume. We did a couple of sets of leg curls. We did a couple of sets on the leg press, a couple of sets on the squats. We're going to only do a couple of sets here on the extension that are really challenging. So all up, it's like seven or eight sets for the entire workout. And if you're looking at a body part specific wise, it's maybe two sets for hamstrings and four, six sets for, for quads and four sets for glutes. Um, but the way we've chosen exercises and pushed to close to failure points, again, we're pretty well guaranteed that we're going to get some kind of meaningful stimulus that we can then build upon in the rest of the week. So the rest of the week, we're going to add in more exercises from different angles and challenge your body in a very similar way.